IPFS has been the primary means of persisting NFT data for years. There's still a lot of work to be done because there's plenty of new L1 chains and L2s that are continuing to put their NFT data on centralized storage. Hey everyone, my name is Steve, and today we're gonna to talk about how to persist NFT data on IPFS and why it's important. The reality is there's a lot of NFTs on the blockchain space right now that are at risk because any of those NFTs are pointing towards a centralized server for their data, it could go down any moment and those NFTs would be lost. The majority of NFTs are typically a token and then a pointer somewhere off chain that has all the data. And that is really why IPFS is here to help persist that NFT data and get rid of a centralized mechanism and turn towards a more sufficiently decentralized one. But even with that, there are some patterns people can follow to help ensure NFT data is persisted. There's really two sides to this. One is the creator and the other is the platform. So starting with creators, the NFT creator really has the ultimate say as to where that NFT data is stored, the images or media, as well as the metadata files. Most of the time, depending on the smart contract, once you have put that into the smart contract, there's no going back and changing where that data is stored. So it's very important to consider beforehand where you want your assets to live. And again, it's all tied back to the token URI. It's that pointer that is on the chain that's pointing to where the external data is stored. Some NFTs, it's a centralized server endpoint, and for others, it's an IPFS link. And so if you are going to use IPFS to help persist your data more, there are a couple of ways you can reference that IPFS data in the token URI. First is the protocol URL, which is just IPFS colon slash slash. It might look familiar because it's something that you would normally put in your URL bar if you're doing HTTPS, but you'll realize that if you do paste a IPFS protocol URL into your browser, it likely won't work unless you have an IPFS node running. So what happens is marketplaces or other platforms that need to render that data when you put it into your NFT contract, they're gonna use their own gateway to render it. And it's usually the best way to ensure data longevity and making sure that the data is kept alive because it's depending on a decentralized protocol versus a centralized one. The other kind of IPFS link you can make is a gateway link. And this is not as good a method as the protocol one, but it can work in a pinch if you really need it to. Basically putting in a gateway and then followed by the CID. The benefit of these is that they work right off the bat. You can copy a gateway link, put in your browser and go look at the content right away. But the downside is that it does in some ways provide a crutch for marketplaces or other platforms that are trying to fetch that data. But what can happen is if that gateway fails, then that data is not accessible immediately. And most marketplaces aren't gonna know exactly what to do with it unless they have the right tools, which we'll get into soon. In the end, either one will technically work because in both the protocol URL and the gateway URL, URL, the CID is fully present. That means any marketplace or any person can grab the CID and access it however they want to, whether it's their own IPFS node or another IPFS gateway. Another thing creators can do to help persist their NFT data on IPFS is to share the IPFS CIDs with their communities. In order for IPFS content to stay online, it has to stay pinned. And the best way to have content stay pinned is to have it pinned by multiple parties. And so if you provide a very long list of CIDs for your NFTs, your community can come in and help pin with their own storage providers or their own IPFS nodes, ensuring a decentralized access to your data. Board Ape Yacht Club is actually a great example of someone who's done this, and I will put a link down in the description where you can look at their provenance section and how they persist NFT data. The other side of this NFT coin is platforms. NFT platforms such as marketplaces have the responsibility of rendering content on the blockchain. When they index a blockchain and they look at the token URI and get an IPFS link, they have two options. They can render it several different ways with gateways, or they can choose just not to render it. However, generally, if you're running a marketplace, that may not be desirable. You want your marketplace to be fast, speedy, reliable, and using decentralized technology. So if you are a marketplace, probably the best thing you could do is use a dedicated gateway along with IPFS gateway tools. Vignata provides these, which allows you to turn any IPFS URL into your own gateway URL. So if someone provides a protocol URL or maybe a public gateway URL that might be slow, you can swap it out with your own gateway to make sure it's fast. And dedicated gateways are generally chosen chosen by marketplaces and platforms because of their speed, built-in CDN, as well as image optimizations, which you can do on the fly so your website stays lightweight and fast. And that's just a few ways that creators and platforms can work together to help NFT data persist using IPFS. To learn more about how you can do this, be sure to check out our blog at pinon.cloud slash blog or subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for more IPFS content. And until next time, happy pinning.